Hallo, ik is Valtje Getri Scheskit in het programma Ek BBC Alba. En we zijn thuis bij ons morgen en een dag aan het Salesforce naar Halbe. Het is mijn schijne baan tijd. Ik is het programma aan het Danville is de Fikus 3. Ik is hier in SWPL, Fiona Nichtkenter, Colorooms in Studio. Het programma is hier nog. Voor mij is het is Fiona Sul Harris, er is het vaste season in SWPL. Ik klik het daar al heis truly, Athena Varnava, en bruin er is het gore mehuri kolos riskepe et er nascente Kypris. Ik is klik het daar LPGA, Gemma Dreibre, en ik is hier in mijn hames en ik is hier in Rune Golf, en zo'n daar is het is het Fiona, welkom bij de 360. Thanks for having me. Now, we haven't seen you since your big move from the SFA back to the SWPL, so can you just bring us up to date on kind of what's been happening and what life looks like now? Yeah, I think I've had a new job every time I've been yeah, on here have. recently. <laughs> I, a, I think that's a good thing, that shows there's been uh -huh. a lot of progress. So I've now moved um, to the Scottish Women's Premier League. It's now set up as a subsidiary of the SPFL, so I've moved from the Scottish FA, where I had a far wider remit for the whole game in terms of development, national teams and performance, to now my focus is on the Premier League and the top 20 clubs in the country and the competitions that they participate in. Are you enjoying being back with the SWPL? Because you, like you said, you did help to set up this new look league and now you're kind of top of it. What is it like seeing it kind of take place and really get into the season? Yeah, it's really exciting for me because I was um, really involved in the creation of it, working with the clubs to make the decision that they wanted to make this move so it would have been really difficult I think to step away from it at this point because the league's obviously moving in a really positive direction I know we're going to chat about the clubs and the, the excitement that's going on in terms of the competition this year so from my perspective it's just been a really positive move there's a lot of positivity around women's football and in particular the SWPL so you're yeah, just delighted to be a part of it. Well let's talk about the top league now because we are well into the new look season Things are very exciting, they're kept very exciting every week. The top three, Glasgow, uh, City, Celtic and Rangers, who we do talk about very often, but they do always sit at the top there. Things are just as competitive. I think it's as competitive a league as I've probably ever seen. I think traditionally, not going back too many years, it was quite often Glasgow City and Hibs that were the two teams to beat and it came down to their results against each other and there was a little bit of predictability in the other games. I think this season, and Hearts getting a point from Rangers at the weekend is a great example of that, that across the leagues, teams are capable of taking points from each other. That top three have obviously sort of moved slightly up the table from the rest. Um, and with the structure we've got and the split coming up fairly soon, those teams have all to play each other twice again. So I think the run-in is going to be exciting and it doesn't look like one club's going to run away with it at this point, which from a neutral perspective um, is really exciting. And that's the thing with the split, that will be very exciting because teams can take points off anyone when you do that. I think that is the beauty of the split and that was one of the conversations we had when we were setting up the league is we understand there's a, a bit of a gap between the top and the bottom. But if in the second half of the season clubs are all playing the teams that are in and around them, it makes for competitive football. And from the neutrals perspective, as we are trying to attract new fans to the game, um, looking at some of the fixtures that will come up post-split between that top three, but also the other clubs in the top six, probably Hibs, Hearts, one other, but also in the bottom half of the table, there's some really there are going to be some really exciting fixtures. Teams trying to avoid relegation, teams trying to avoid that playoff spot in PL1 and then also the same for uh, PL2. We have seen so much growth throughout the, the past couple of seasons, but who has surprised you this season the most? Um, I think everyone would probably say Hearts. Um, I wouldn't say it's an entirely a surprise because you've seen their sort of steady growth, but I think that result of the weekend certainly made everyone raise their eyebrows a little bit. And it's certainly the result that when we came into the office on Monday, that was the one everyone was speaking about. So um, I think Hearts have done incredibly well to compete so quickly um, with some of the top teams that are full time because they are not quite full time yet mm -hmm. I think it's been really impressive but we're still seeing clubs like Partick Thistle punching above their weight um, Aberdeen probably started slowly this season but they've gone on to a little run of form in the last two or three games and taking themselves out of that relegation battle or certainly out of the relegation places so um, there's been a few surprise packages but I think Hearts probably top that list well, you mentioned that Hearts Rangers is a result, a nil-nil draw. When you look back even at the past couple of seasons, Hearts were regularly getting beat 6-0 by Rangers, 5-0 by Rangers. They were conceding so many goals. That growth, even though it's it's been steady, but you could, you're really seeing the results now. How much more do you want to see that across the other teams? 
I think they're a good example, um, given that they came up from the sort of Premier League too. Uh, but as a club, they really invested into our women's section. I spent a little bit of time in and around Hearts recently because we hosted our cup final at Tynecastle. And speaking to Andrew McKinley and Joe Savage there, they speak about the women's team with the same passion. They know the results, they know the fixtures that's coming up. They speak about their women's team with the exact same passion as they do their men's team. And I think that's really refreshing and exciting to see. They've obviously recruited well, Eva's done incredibly well, but they've invested in the right areas in terms of making sure those players have got access to good facilities, strength and conditioning, and I think they're a good example of um, being patient and taking your time and taking the right steps, and they're now beginning to see that come to fruition on the field. How do we get other teams on board the way that Hearts are? I think other teams are doing that. Um, patience isn't a virtue we have in Scottish football, but I think other clubs are just at different parts and there are different spaces sort of stages in their journey at the moment. Clubs have all got different resources, they've got different demographics that they're working with, so I think that the different clubs have slightly different models, but um, you'd certainly point to Hearts as being a sort of fairly successful model and one that other clubs may look to replicate. It's been brilliant to see their growth. I'm excited to see what actually happens in this, the second part of the season now, but even just briefly with SWPL2, it's really interesting to see that the two teams that were promoted are now sitting top of the table there too. I know it's a bit of a fairy tale story that one isn't it and I think that's another good example of if you have ambition and good recruitment that things are possible and it's very likely that one or both of Gart and Montrose may be in the, the top league next season which is incredible when you think about where they were this time last year so yeah I think it's just um, another good example that in women's football it's really is possible to achieve um, some quite exciting moments. That would be some story, wouldn't it? But Fiona, it's great to have you back and we'll be hearing more from you shortly. Well, a she gurum gu squad hipres er son a hit ur, Rainchinery click at their all highs through Lee, Athena Varnava, Mun Unu Collarish and Skip and Nashante, I guess an upper crue a hire Hurishak er son an Irishaw room. Look at their balcosha keepers of Athena Vernava from Gemma Anamoch Nabehe. Ayas had dirty yolis at a heat Gemma Slanike, who's in the Hua she could break in Sonohe. So I first joined the club uh, when I came here in the UK for university at Cardiff University. Uh, it was my first football club. Uh, I still remember that day that I walked into the sports fair and I looked around the stands and it was ladies' football. And I was just astonished. I was like, yes, um, I want to join this club. And that was my first club when I was 18. And then my first Sunday team was uh, King Coed Ladies in, in Wales, in Cardiff, uh, when I was 21. So it was very late that I started playing like 11 v 11 and in a full team setting because 5 v 5 is all nice and stuff, but it's different to play in a full field like with lights on and the, like to, to have a purpose. My university coach, even um, in Cardiff, uh, well, helped me a lot. Uh, I played futsal there as well, uh, which it helps massively, like with things like uh, practicing your weak foot or like your first touch and everything. And obviously, again, competing in Welsh Premier League in the first division, highest level of football in Wales, again, it uh, helped me improve my game in terms of tempo, in terms of anticipation, like being sharp and all these sorts of things. And I'm grateful to all my coaches there. And in terms of fond memories, of course, like we we won the um, the Welsh Premier League Cup against uh, against Cardiff Met um, in 2018, and that was definitely like one of, of the highlights that I will keep forever and uh, also winning back to back uh, the Bucks League in Western 1A and 1B to get promoted for the first time ever the Cardiff University's history to play for Premier South. Again that was something extraordinary being part of that team um, and to be honest at that time you don't even 
realize how big achievements those are because you're there, you're playing football with your friends, your teammates, and it's all just very enjoyable. But looking back, it's just, it, I, I mean, it just brings me a smile on my face. A stay on your garage at Partick Thistle, Lewis Athena go all high through life. For an Aiki Sapa Shirash will drop to lead this in. It's really good. I mean, I had a few setbacks with with some injuries when I first came here. I mean, all, all the girls were really, really welcome. The, the coaches really trusted me and it, it creates a very safe environment like for someone to, to go and show what they can do basically and just show their skills. Um, and it was really unlucky because my first friendly back, um, I had a serious calf injury and I went to the A&E and everything. I couldn't walk and then I was out for three months. And then I came back in the next season and I was feeling good and I started the season very good and then I broke my ankle. <laughs> so it was it was just really unlucky. So it feels like I've been here for a short time, if that makes sense. And even though it's almost two years here, I've played about 10, 15 games or something like that. Uh, but no, uh, the, this, the team helps a lot to uh, for the player to come in and you know feel calm and safe so they can improve their abilities and everything and I'm really enjoying my time here now. Let Amazon close and do it like a home. Who are the first good pre of coach a key press? Rainy Ma, I just hurry and call him close and then skip a nash and it. I just want to hear a hear that up. I never played in Cyprus so the national team coach wasn't aware of me and um, we had to contact him basically. So um, uh, I thought it was a bit of a shot in the dark, if I'm honest with you. And then when he came back to me and he asked for, you know, for footage and everything, I, I, got, I got really excited. I mean, it was a fantastic feeling, like getting attention from your, from your national team. It's, it, it's what every player wants to do, to play at the highest level and play for their country. And then, yeah, when he agreed to, to call me, I was ecstatic. I mean, it was, it was an unbelievable feeling. It's, almost like a fire in your heart, you know, um, and I was really, really happy about it. And uh, I felt like all my efforts have paid off and, you know, having at the back of your head all your injuries that you're having and all the setbacks and still working towards it and having this as an outcome, it's an unbelievable feeling. It's, it was really, really good. Seeing how top, top players are playing, you want to be better and better every time it gives you motivation like seeing players so talented and I mean okay they're playing full-time and everything but for me personally it, it gives me the motivation to be more like them and and drive and towards uh, improving all, all the weaknesses that I have because I'm aware that I, I mean no player is perfect so uh, of course it, it gives you that extra boost and uh, I hope that I could uh, step towards uh, towards a higher level uh, going forward. Ha Athena Nochus Kumalora Lesaku, I used to clash in the pre of league in Balkosha. I show you Sapas your son of hatches and skip a nash and the you'll do like a hatch at a cow. As as long as I'm here in Scotland, um I, I would like to play at the at the highest level. I, I want to drive and play uh, at uh, Scottish Premier League one. Um uh, I'm working towards it. I might succeed, I might not, but that is uh, definitely one of my targets. And obviously now continue getting the collapse and helping also the team here. I think those two t things go hand in hand, to be honest. If you're, if you're improving and you're helping the team, then you're still going to get the attention. So one brings the other, uh, help the team. Get, keep, the, keep getting the international collapse and then hopefully look look at higher level. I don't think I've realized uh, how, how far I've come, to be honest with you. And uh, I think I had to, to look back um, last week to, to see at, in, against what players and with what players I played with. Uh, you know, they're all full-time footballers and uh, I think it... it it's, it's a great, great achievement and um, I'm, I'm really proud about it. But uh, obviously, there's still things to work on and yeah, I'm just enjoying football. I just I want to play in, in any team that I'm in. I just, just want to play, I just want to improve and, and uh, continue growing.
Fiona, what a brilliant story. Starting football very late on compared to most other people and then going on to play for your national team. I know, it's quite incredible, isn't it? Starting to play in adulthood and within a few years you're playing for your national team. That's Everyone has a different journey, but that's definitely not a, a common story. It's incredible that she's been able to achieve so much having started playing football so late in her life. She's clearly benefiting so much from, from being in Scotland and playing her football here. And actually, I, I love how she even got involved with the national team by phoning up the manager and saying, hey, I'm playing here in Scotland, do you want me? I know, it's an incredible story, isn't it? It was nice seeing our training there with Stirling University. That's where I went to uni and actually one of the players in the background there, Emma Lines, was somebody I played with and that wasn't yesterday. So it's just really nice to see her building that real friendship group and she seems to be really thriving here in Scotland and that call up to the national team has obviously just been something really special for her. And they actually, with Stirling Uni, um, had a taste of, of top level football in Scotland recently, playing Rangers in the Scottish Cup. They did get beat 11-0, wasn't a great result for them, but even, even just having that experience, how, how much can you take away for a team like Stirling Un University? playing a team like Rangers? I think that's what all the clubs in the SWPL2 would say when they've played one of the top league teams this season, whether that be in the Sky Sports Cup or in the, the Scottish Cup. It's an opportunity to benchmark and see how far away you are from those top teams. So the players will have learned a lot about, a lot about themselves. It maybe wasn't enjoyable on the day, but <laughs> and I've played in a few of those games as well where you don't touch the ball a lot. but. Overall, I think when they go to reflect and do their analysis, you learn a lot from matches like that um, and I'm, I'm sure that will help them as the season goes on. And Athena, she has clearly found her natural talent because even through injury, which we heard about, can you actually just tell us how difficult that would be to start at that age, to go through injury and to come back and, and still be playing and like we know still play for your national team. And when you think about, uh, there's, no, there's no such thing as a standard path, but a lot of players now start at a young age playing small-sided football and that's where they build up a lot of their technical skills and then they go into 11-a-side football and they learn a lot of the tactical side of the game. So to come into the game so late and have to pick up both of those things so quickly and then suffer the injuries she's had, so she's lost a little bit of development even in her adult years. And then to get into your national team, it's probably almost unheard of. You wonder actually where she could be now had she started sooner, at like 10 or, or even 15. Well, she's still young now, so uh -huh. I, I guess we'll be keeping an eye on her for the next few years because having broken into the national team, she sounds like she's ambitious and um, she wants to keep playing at that level and test herself at the, the top leagues in Europe. So I think she's definitely one for us all to keep an eye on. It's great, it's, it's brilliant to see what a, a fantastic story from Athena. And the thing is, football we've seen is progressing so much. There are still areas to build on. We know there's been a lot of, of s women in football speaking out recently about being a new mum in the game. Not necessarily here in Scotland, but down south, uh, a Scotland international, Emma McCandy, formerly Mitchell, spoke recently about being a new mum and the, di the difficulties facing that with her team. And also, um, even just this week, Sarah Bjork, Gunnar's daughter, spoke out about the um, the difficulties that she faced with Leon, she's now with Juventus, being a mum. Just tell us, first of all, before we get into that, what is the situation up here in Scotland if you do play in the top league and you are to get pregnant and have a baby? Well, there's a number of things up here in Scotland. First of all, when I was at the Scottish FA, we spent a lot of time working on a maternity policy. So Emma McCandy actually brought her baby into camp and it was one of the trips that I was on with the national team. And that policy was all about for the national team players, making sure that if they have children and they choose to have children, that that shouldn't be a barrier or shouldn't complicate their participation at national team level. Um, and I remember speaking to Emma at the time when she was pregnant and making sure that she understood that we were really excited to have her back and we wanted to do everything we could to accommodate her coming back into the national team setup. So I think there's a lot of proactive work that's been done by the Scottish FA that should be commended on that front for um, making sure that Emma had that really positive return. And the players loved it, having a baby in camp. You know, she was in at team meetings and at dinner time and everything. So that's been a really positive experience. And at club level, we've obviously now got more professional players 
this is the first year we've ever had a standard professional contract and within that standard professional contract, which all the clubs now use, it ensures that the clubs are compliant with any regulations, statutory regulations around maternity pay, um, minimum wage and also any FIFA and UEFA regulations. So that's another positive step that's just been taken in the past 12 months. But as, as, as a mum that works in football, it, there's still challenges and it's not easy and there's um, certainly still work to be done, but we're making good progress here in Scotland. It's good to hear about Scotland and, and I know there is, like you said, still work to be done, but even if there's a, a couple of quotes actually from Emma and Sarah, I mean, Sarah had said, they always made me feel like it was a negative thing that I had a baby. Emma had even said, I had to fake an injury because I didn't want to tell anyone I was pregnant. Is it difficult hearing that as a mother that women in football, like I say, this is not happening in Scotland, but women in football are feeling that way about having a baby? I mean, it's a very, sh football is a very short career, being able to have a baby is a very small window too, as a woman, coming up to 30. <laughs> it's sc scary knowing that that could stop at some point. So for these women playing football, what's it like hearing that? It's not a nice thing to hear because I think when you find out you're pregnant, there's a lot of emotions anyway, regardless of what your work situation is. And even if you're happy about it and excited, there's definitely still a nervousness about the impact it will have on your life complicate that further by the fact that maybe you fear that your career could be in jeopardy because of that. That's certainly not a feeling that I'm comfortable with the thought of players or anyone working in football having. So um, hopefully in Scotland we don't have that same um, sort of negative stories and that, that players can see that you can have it both. You, you can be a mum and also have a successful career in football. What do you think, what, what kind of work needs to be done across the board in the first instance to take this on and, and make these female players feel more comfortable? There's probably an element of education because there'll be some people that are working in football clubs and we've got volunteers in some instances working in football clubs that maybe don't know how to respond to that news. So um, maybe that sort of proactive communication to players around, not just maternity policies, but other areas that female players may wish to speak about just making that safe space where people feel comfortable that they can come forward and share things without that fear of a negative reaction I think just that proactive communication can certainly help but as I said the policy side of it is also important making sure that we have procedures in place that ensure that the players are looked after in terms of their rights because that's also really important. Well, I'm sure it's not the last we'll be hearing because there will be more babies <laughs> within women's football soon but um, Fiona thanks very much. Thank you. Well, Vunig Gemma Driver coached LPGA and a Japan and Nuri, a Hiet the Albanach, Raina Lee Hitch Fogley, Katrina Matthews, and a Davilis a Hin Jiak. Her three Sheskid Korum, Brunri Gemma, is Clench in a Hash and a Kilachur, he, I guess the high in Dochestry Kalinach, and a Davila Fikis a three. But Davila is ticket to go, playing the Italy and a goal to Gemma Dreiber. Now the question is here, Chichtel, LPGA, Eichke, and the Japan, Nudi. Yeah, ecstatic. It was an uh, amazing end to the year. I was I was having my best season already before I won. Um, and then, you know, obviously winning just kind of topped it off. Um, so amazing feeling to finally get a win. It's kind of been a dream of mine ever since I can remember, really. So. Um, for it to happen now is amazing and then kind of ended the season well as well um, got into the Tour Championship and finished top 10 there so it was a really good end to the season I think just gradually everything's kept improving um, my short game's got a lot better um, I say I got maybe slightly longer off the tee um, and so it's just kind of added up everything and also kind of my, my mental state I've kind of worked a lot on that on how I feel on the golf course and everything, so it's kind of just all added up, I think. By all the stay young Arpis on the soon smashing, but big and miss no high gem a good sort of a cushion hollering. I guess not he and Jing Hai Yang, Mark Roy, Dolly Vunyak. I was feeling pretty confident. I had to, it felt like I was playing well going into it, and I was a little bit frustrated with some of my results that year, this year because I felt like I'd been playing well, but not quite getting like the full results out of it. Um, so my caddy and I, the week before in Korea, we kind of spoke about, you know, just staying patient with it and, you know, felt like I was ready to win out on LPGA. 
Um, so we're just like, you know, you know, why not me? So it literally happened like the week before we were having this discussion. Um, so I guess maybe just like a thing in my head just flipped and was like, you know, why not? Um, and, you know, it was a good opportunity. It was a smaller field. And, um, you know, I, I feel like I play quite well abroad as well. Uh, been to Japan once before and had good memories there. So um, and the vibes were just amazing. Like the fans were incredible. The biggest fans I've ever seen um you know they, they were keen for us on the Thursday morning just warming up there was loads and loads of people watching which is amazing and they're just so supportive um so just kind of feeding off the good vibes as well and um but yeah just felt really confident with my game and um, I didn't putt that well the first day I was working on my putting a lot uh the previous day um and I think felt like I was just thinking about it too much and then the second third and fourth day I just kind of like let myself play um and it's the, the the whole felt like a bucket, which is an amazing feeling. A gemma a heat all up enough, a douche of Vunyak at Coach LPGA, who Katrina Matthews and a Davila's in Jeek. A seeing dog is going to brought to the heat of Klanian, because the Hamilton Sports are ring. Yeah, incredible. Um, I almost like can't wait for the next season to start. I'm like, with the momentum I had, it's like, oh, I just want to keep playing. Uh, but also, it's nice to have some time off now, too. But um, having that win, you know, just changes my whole like start of the year next year. I get into the Tournament of Champions in January and then the Asia Swing in February. So before that, I didn't have anything until March. So it's kind of changed my whole start of the year, which is great. Obviously, I looked up to Katrina for a long time. Um, so it's nice to actually get another Scottish win on tour. Um, and hopefully we can see a few more Scots on tour soon with me. I'm uh, feeling a bit lonely at the moment, so it'd be nice if some of them join me. Um, but yeah, it's nice to fly the flag and um, get another Scottish win on the tour. It'd be great to kind of be that that voice for the, the Scots on the LPGA and uh, hopefully can inspire a few girls. Um, hopefully I'll be able to see some of them when I'm back in Scotland at some point and kind of, you know, speak to them and try and inspire them more. So um, hopefully they'll, they'll keep enjoying their golf and hopefully join me soon. <laughs> A Gemma Tolichter gave a hopper crew a Agasa Hula E perch Eichter in the Vina Vuonoch in the Nuanya. I has the fast clarcher the Shumpuonoch Eichter. Yeah, it's just kind of when I had, you know, when I was actually on the 18th green looking at the scoreboard, I was like, oh, just kind of having flashbacks of all these moments where it's, you know, felt like, oh, you know, like the end so far or like, you know, reaching my goals are so far away, but. You know, like those cold winter days that you're out there when your hands are freezing and kind of working hard on your game, it's all kind of pays off in the end. So um, that'll keep me motivated as well whenever I'm, you know, I'm sure I'll go through a, a spell where I'm maybe not playing as well. And that'll kind of motivate me to keep going. It's been, yeah, it's well, the last the two weeks after were pretty hectic because I had, you know, lots of media stuff to do, which was great. Um, but yeah, it's just different, you know, being a winner because usually if you're not you know you're just kind of going through your your own routine but when you win like there's lots of people asking for your time and stuff so I'm sure people like Rory like and you know Nelly Corda and stuff have to do that every week so um be nice to get used to that I guess but um it's not a bad thing for sure. Han Nurin Gemma favours on Toshik and the Hazen. I guess I do not fear the egg and share the hearing and a derby must be hit three. I am Doc, as Galeniora Alessica, as he comes to the free of Lehet and the Ranganum and Tull. Yeah, very excited. It's um, already kind of ready to go, but <laughs> um, but yeah, it'd be nice to get the season started in January in, in Orlando and um, then go to Asia again. So um, hopefully, some good vibes as well for that. And uh, then we start um, in America in March. So then it's kind of pretty busy from then on. Um, so yeah, just really excited for it. and. Being an exempt in, to all the tournaments is you know, something I've not had before, so I can kind of plan my schedule, which will be great. Um, I'm in all the majors as well, which is a huge bonus. So not having to, you know, fit in a qualifier here or there for the US Open and, you know, not having to qualify for the British. So it's just a huge bonus having that win. Thinking about 2019, like, got so much more experience now. I feel much more comfortable on tour. I feel like you know, when I'm, you know, walking onto the range, feel, feeling confident, you know, being among, amongst those amazing girls. Uh, when I first came on to it, it was quite intimidating almost because, you know, you're seeing girls that you've watched on TV for years um, and it kind of felt about my depth a bit. But now I feel very comfortable out there, which is great and know most of the girls. And um, so it's, yeah, very, very different state, I feel like now. 
my goal at the start of this year was to get in the top 100. So to do, to do that, it was amazing. Um, so now I guess top 50 is the next goal. Um, but yeah, just keep, kind of keep climbing and keep the momentum going, hopefully. Um, and then, you know, another goal of mine is um, Solheim next year. That was, I mean, that's just a dream of mine for ever since I can remember watching it. So um, yeah, definitely a goal of mine next year as well. Fiona, what a brilliant story from Jamma. She's really kind of come into her own recently and then finally to get that win. How brilliant is that to see? It's amazing. You can tell how much it means to her as well, but for someone that's just won a major tournament, she seems really quite calm and humble about it and almost ready just to go out and do the same again um, next year. But it's just brilliant to see a, a Scottish athlete being successful on the international stage. And the first Scot to win on the LPGA Tour since Katrina Massey's in 2011. I mean, it's a huge amount of time anyway, but what a player to emulate too. And it sounds like that was her role model as well. So what a nice way to hand over the baton and be the next player that, that does that. So it was interesting hearing her speaking about her mentality and different things as well. So I think in golf in particular, you've really got to have that strong mentality. So Can't lose the heads when you're exactly, on the green. <laughs> on the green. Well, that's the thing I was just going to say about that winning mentality because as Scots, we can be guilty of maybe putting ourselves down and not having that confidence that... Uh, so many other people have but you can see from Gemma she's just she just seems very calm and collected about it all. She's very composed isn't she? I think in any performance sport though like that belief in yourself is really important and that confidence but I think in an individual sport even more so because you can't have an off day and rely on your teammates to dig you out of a hole she literally has to rely on herself and that, that takes a great amount of self-belief um, but she seems to have trained hard as well speaking about the cold mornings on the, <laughs> on the greens and things so um, credit to her. You know it's, it's brilliant we're very very happy for Gemma great work and I mean she's on the tour so hopefully we will see another win soon but Fiona as always with you there's so much going on there's so much happening that you're across what is still to come for the SWPL this season? Well we're not even through our first season yet this year's been all about building the brand, the competition, the board, the staff team and getting things off the ground and trying to bring in as many sort of new partners as we can. So I think next season it will be a bit of reflection on this year and how things have gone um, and then really just building on that platform that we've built this year across the competitions and the commercial side and all of sort of visibility through our broadcast partnership. So certainly building on where we're from will be the, the sort of objective for next year. You must be really pleased with how things are going and we've heard so many times this season of record attendances, teams playing at, at huge stadiums and getting those people in. For, for you, how good is it to see that? It's amazing. It's what we, I guess it's what we strive to do and I think a few times this year I've said it's another milestone for the women's game and it almost sounds a bit repetitive but that's probably reflective of how quickly the game is moving, that we keep having these records and milestones, as you say, whether that be our TV audiences or the record crowd we had at Easter Road or the League Cup been sponsored for the first time. All these things are, are all major milestones for women's football and they've happened in a really short space of time. What's the dream? What would you love to see happen within the SWPL? I think we'd love to have a fully professional league. I think even a few years ago, if you had said the number of professional players we have now and the number of full-time clubs that we have, people would maybe have been sceptical of that being possible. So I guess to have a full-time professional league for women in Scotland, that's the, the ultimate dream and that's what we're all striving towards. Do you think we could see that in the, the next couple of seasons or will that take quite a, a lot longer to, to build? It's not impossible. It depends on the level of investment at club level and what we can generate centrally and through our different partnerships. So. It's certainly not impossible because looking at where we are now, there would probably have been a few people saying what you've delivered this year is impossible. So um, we certainly don't limit our ambition or what we're trying to do. Um, so I do believe it is possible and we just have to keep continuing to work together to get us there. With all the hard work that you've done, it'll happen. You'll be on the sofa. <laughs> You'll be on the sofa soon with a fully professional league. I'll be on the sofa for a snooze, I think. <laughs> yeah, you need that. But honestly, Fiona, thank you so much for joining us again. Amazing work with everything that you do for the league and we just love hearing all your stories and what's happening. Thanks for having me. Well, Shania is on programme in a shachkin se, and a shachkin being Luke Lessig and Kelsey Stewart call the room in studio. Jan Keen shachkin, Valshiv Lenten, BBC Alva, Eccles Gunkalshiv programme in B. 
Agus Kainichiv, Gumbi Gem SWPL Bio, Air BBC Alba, Erin Jerry Hyachkin, Lee Celtic, a Clicket Partic Thistle. Kishin Shiv, and Ach Hyachkin.